Thank you, choir and handbell choir. Well, for this morning's moment of learning, I'm going to cover something. And just as a reminder, these moments of learning are going to be sometimes something that some of you are already going to know. But that's okay. It's always good to review. And then sometimes there's going to be things. But usually I've tried to put things in here that are things that I feel like as Christians we should know. And oftentimes I get questions and somebody doesn't quite know the answer. We're all along that process. So I'm going to cover something that uh, a lot of people will know, as I said. What are the basic types of books that make up the Bible? You know, the Bible is a wonderful collection of 66. It's almost like a, a library in a certain sense, it's a collection of 66 books written by many different authors over a period of in excess of 1,500 years, and all collected in one place. But they have lots of different uh, styles and so forth, and I wanted to just kind of remind ourselves a little bit of this. And I'd had somebody ask me this question a few weeks ago, so I thought I would cover it. Now, there's several general categories that the books of the Bible can be given. I put up here kind of some of the standard uh, sorts. We have history, wisdom, law, poetry, prophecy, gospels, epistles, which are also letters, and apocalyptic. And there's some books that kind of fall cleanly with one another and, so, and some that are really more of a mix. But this is just kind of a general overview. And it's good for us to know these different types. We don't want to pin, our, pin ourselves down to one thing. As I said, some books fall cleanly within one category or another, but it's important to note that most books contain elements of more than just one of these lists. So there may be a major category that it falls in, but there may be a portion of that book that falls under another, another category, or there may be books that kind of really straddle in both at the same time. So going back to um, an example of some of these different ones, history books, you could think there's certainly a lot of parts in the Old Testament that have a lot of history. If you start going through Kings or Chronicles and so forth, a lot of history in there. But they'll also have other elements, for perhaps like songs or poetry in there uh, as well. Uh, one of the most uh, historical books of the New Testament is Acts which has a lot of uh, a fulfillment of prophecy from the Old Testament, but it kind of gives a history of the church as it starts. Um, Gospels of, are, of course, talking about the life of Christ specifically. Now, everything altogether points to Christ, points to God altogether, but they do it in different sorts of fashions. Poetry are things you think of like uh, uh, lamentations or uh, parts of the Psalms, and there's lots of examples. Uh, uh, prophecy, what else did I have in there? Wisdom, for example, uh, Proverbs, even James kind of falls into that category as well, and obviously the epistles are the, a lot of things like Philippians, Ephesians, and so forth that we cover. So they each have their own aspect, but you will find elements of law, which we think of like Leviticus or Deuteronomy, we find elements of those actually in some of the epistles where Paul is saying these are the things we are or aren't supposed to do as Christians. So we have to be careful not to nail them down too much into one thing, but what I wanted to kind of highlight it's that knowing what type of literature and the intended purpose of each book and even parts of the book is extremely important and helpful in understanding what the inspired author and the Holy Spirit are trying to convey and in some cases isn't. And most of the times where you're, you hear about people going off the rails is because what they do is they try and read something that's poetry and they try and read it as history or they try and read something that is in one category and they, like apocalyptic, like revelation or something, they try and make it into something that we as humans can be able to read in a different way, and it was never intended for that purpose. You see in Genesis, parts of it are very, very historical, and there's other parts that are very poetical, and there's other parts that are, are wisdom. There's all those bound together. So it's just important for us to know that there's different aspects of these different books, and as we hold the Bible as the Word of God, we must be extremely careful that we don't overinterpret or misinterpret the meaning uh, and first determine the type of literature that we're reading protects us from misusing it or misunderstanding what the Lord is saying to us as Christians. And so that's the moment of learning for today.